Good morning. This video is going to kind of walk you through the um, Advanced AEP Digestion Lab, looking at some of the histology photos and things that you need to know and to kind of go through those, especially for you in the online sections, since you won't be able to go through all of these during lab. You can follow along in your lab packet or any um, potential supplementary diagrams that I have included that would allow you to label these. And we'll just kind of go through based on, go through each objective one through seven, I believe. So objective one is to differentiate mechanical from chemical digestion. So mechanical digestion, remember, is the physical breaking, tearing, mashing, chewing of food products, breaking it down into physically smaller pieces. And chemical digestion is going to be breaking down large molecules into their small individual building blocks. So in terms of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, carbohydrates are going to be broken down into monosaccharides. So examples of these are glucose, fructose, and galactose. They're going to get absorbed into our mucosal cells, and they'll move from our small intestines into our bloodstream through active transport and facilitated diffusion. Lipids are going to need to be emulsified first or broken down into water droplets or fat droplets, and then they are broken down into fatty acids and glycerols. They're, those are the building blocks of lipids. And then missiles will absorb into the mucosal cells where they will be modified to form chylomicrons that are taken up by lymph vessels in that lacteal structure of the villi. Proteins are going to be broken down into amino acids. That's their building blocks. They are like proteins, easily absorbed into mucosal cells through diffusion, active transport. Um, they don't need to um, go through a separate process like fats do. Objective two, on a microscope slide, model or diagram, identify the following regions, organs, structures, tissues, and cells of the alimentary canal or the GI tract. So there are some pictures that you should look at um, and some structures that I want you to know. This is the esophagus. Here is the smooth muscle. Remember that there are four tissue layers in all of the GI tract. There is the serosa, the muscularis externa, which contains two layers, the longitudinal muscles and the circular muscles, the submucosa and the mucosa layer. So here is a picture of an esophagus. It's important to understand that the esophagus will be lined here with the mucosa layer. It's going to be stratified squamous epithelial tissues, and this is really important because we want it to be stratified, meaning that it has more than one layer because we have food that's constantly rubbing up against it and a lot of friction, and so this is going to help it protect the underlying tissue layers. And then there's a smooth muscle here, which is going to be responsible for those alternating contractions or peristalsis that will push the food through the esophagus. So again, here's a picture of the stratified squamous right here. And then here's the smooth muscle. Both the stratified squamous and the smooth muscle significant to what the esophagus's job is. Looking at a stomach, the stomach is going to have a columnar epithelial tissue, simple columnar. So this, the type of cell is going to be different than that of the esophagus. It is going to have gastric pits. So you can see these indentations here. Now you're going to want to be really careful that you don't confuse these with the villi and the small intestines. But, you know, the gastric, these gastric pits are much more shallow than the villi. So that's kind of your um, giveaway. So again, the mucosa is going to be lined with simple columnar. So we are going to have some absorption and secretion taking place. So we don't want to have all of those different layers like we did in the esophagus. There are gastric glands that are going to be responsible for releasing hormones located within the stomach tissue. And then again, there's going to be smooth muscle that you can't actually see. It would be down here below. That's going to allow the stomach to churn without us having to think about it. Again, here's a surface view of those pits, the gastric pits. Kind of interesting to, to look at. On the small intestines, look, you can see these. These are the villi, an important distinction of this type of tissue. So look for that. 
A is showing you the intestinal villi. So here is an actual, is an actual villi. These will be made of simple columnar tissues as well. Then you have the smooth muscle, which is C right down here. And then here you have these patches called Pryor's patches, which are going to be lymphatic tissues. And they'll be located here right on top of that smooth muscle layer. Looking at the large intestines then, you are not going to have the villi. It is also columnar cells that are going to line the mucosal layer. There is a smooth muscle that would be located down here. And these big white blobs here are goblet cells and their job is to secrete mucus. Here is objective three, identifying the detailed structures of an intestinal villus. So again, A, which is this green part here, this is the lacteal, the middle part of the villi, and this is going to be where fat is going to get absorbed and then eventually taken and put into the lymph system. B is the capillaries that are going to exist within the villi right around here so it kind of surrounds the lacteal structure. C is referring to the entire structure here which is the villus or the villi. D which is right here again just showing you simple columnar tissue. E is showing you a goblet cell so that would be the little blue dots right here goblet cells which secrete or make mucus. F is showing you the prior patch. Okay, so it's going to play a role in lymph structure. And then G down here is showing you the smooth muscle. So that's the model of an intestinal villi. And then there would be tiny little microvilli all along that as well. Objective four is identifying the parts of the salivary glands. So this is a histograph of a salivary gland, you can see that under A are the different alveolar cells, and then at the tip of the arrow is a salivary duct. So those alveolar cells will produce that saliva. Moving on to objective four, this is going to look at the pancreas. So C right up in here is the pancreatic acinus. So this is an acinar cell. A is just showing the endocrine section of the pancreas, like so endocrine cells of the pancreas. C, because this is the acinus, is actually an exocrine cell. So this is going to represent the pancreatic islets or the islets of Langerhans right here. D is showing you the pancreatic duct. And B is just a capillary. Looking at the liver module, so this can be found in the lab, but again, most of you won't be able to see that. You can see that in the liver module, letter A is going to refer to well, let's look at D first. So D, this is showing you an entire um, lobule, so the functional units that exist in the lobule. So if you look at, that's the entire structure in the red square here, okay? S structure A, which is going to be right here in purple. I know that these this is kind of blurry, but it's hard to see. So right here in purple is structure A. That's going to be a sinusoid. So here's a sinusoid, here's a sinusoid, here's a sinusoid. Then you're going to look at structure B, which is right in here, which is the branch of the hepatic portal vein. You can look at hepatocytes, which are going to be labeled C. And these are going to be all of these structures right here. D is the central vein. At the tip of the red arrow here is the Kupfer cell, which is going to be responsible for breaking up red blood cell debris. 
and at the tip of the black arrow is going to be the bile caniculi. So these right here, these long black lines. Going to objective six, describe the function of each of the following. These are going to be the different glands slash cells that exist in the digestive tract. So the salivary alveolar gland is going to make a salivary amylase, which will help um, start the process of breaking down carbohydrates. Pancreatic acinar cells or glands are going to make pancreatic amylase, again, to help start breaking down carbohydrates. The pancreatic islet alpha cells are going to produce glycogen which will be released when blood sugar levels are low in order to increase the blood sugar level. The beta cells will produce insulin, which gets released when the blood sugar levels are too high. So when you eat something and all of that sugar that's in that food, that carbohydrates enters into your blood supply, your blood sugar levels increases. And so then your pancreas will produce, the beta cells will produce insulin in order to facilitate your cells to basically take in that glucose and lower your blood sugar level. Hepatocytes take in and process nutrients and chemical substances. And then hepatic macrophage or the cup for cells remove cellular debris and help engulf bacteria that might be in the blood supply. And that all would be in the portal, hepatic portal circulation. Looking at objective seven, which again refers to the hepatic portal circulation. So the gastric veins are going to be over in here. The splenic veins will be over by the spleen down in that particular area. The superior mesenteric vein, which is going to be right down here. Then you have the inferior mesenteric brain, which will vein, not brain, vein, which will be over in this area. The hepatic portal vein which is right here, and then the hepatic veins, which would be up in this particular area. And all of these things are going to play a role in, remember, the nutrients get absorbed into, that blood into the blood supply from the small intestines and large intestines, but then that blood actually goes into this separate circulatory system called the hepatic portal, where it will be, those nutrients will then get pulled out as well as other waste products through this circulatory system and then dumped back in to the blood supply where it can be then taken to all the other cells of the body. This picture is really important. I guarantee you will see these and you will need to identify them. These were the four major organs that we talked about. And even though they are all made of the four same tissue layers, the um, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and the serosa layer, there are differences in them and you need to be able to identify them. So this is the esophagus with the stratified squamous, remember, because we need the extra protection as food pushes through. This is the stomach with the gastric pits in it. And then it would be columnar cells that line those gastric pits or that tissue, that, that mucosa. The small intestines with its columnar cells and its long, deep villi, villi. And then the large intestines with its really pronounced goblet cells.